Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcast. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Penny Bloom Podcast. It is I, Colton Robertson, joined by my good friend, Joseph George. What's up, buddy? What's up? How's it going? Hey, we got Miles Buttress. How's it going? I'm good. Good to see you, buddy. I mean, not see you. I can see everybody else, but not you. And on the screen to my right that I can see and you cannot, we have Kyla Barnett. How you doing, bud? I am fantastic. Fantastic. Today, we speak of The Mandalorian, as this is Star Wars, The Mandalorian, The Watchmen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot the colons. I forgot the colons. I made but, uh, it. You did. You did I'm make it. Made it. Uh, this is The Mandalorian rewatch, and today we're talking Season 2, Chapter 10, The Passenger. This is a good one. I don't care what anybody says. I don't. I, filler? Sure. Maybe. <sighs> Still so enjoyable. Still Dude, highly entertaining. I think I think I like the way they're teasing us with not giving us any big story bits in either of these episodes. And I really like that this episode like just took a totally different direction than you would have expected given the circumstances and also Absolutely. that we haven't seen. It was just hilarious from start to finish. It really was. Well, Joseph, how'd you feel about the episode? I don't know. I mean, it's still good on you know on the grand scheme of things, but within the Mandalorian, you know, when you're holding it to that standard, I mean, it wasn't one of the best episodes, that's for sure. But, I mean, it was still enjoyable. I don't think it'll be one of the best of on anyone. It's one of my it's favorites, going to be, though. Yes, it's like going to be a fan favorite. And that's, yes, I think, really? the distinction. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That, it that won't be the best, critically, but but favored. Yeah, I agree. Not the best. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't continue any storylines. It doesn't really push anything forward in any way. Maybe, uh, maybe we get some follow through with, uh, the frog lady's husband and possibly that's what makes this episode important. But, uh, as of right now, obviously it seems pretty one off, you know? So, uh, it doesn't continue the story in any way, which makes it a little bit hard to touch, you know? It's like, eh, yeah. it's, it's not great. And on my first watch, I won't lie. I was, as soon as it ended, me and Joseph were going back and forth, and I was like, it's certainly certainly not the best episode The Mandalorian's ever released. And I was disappointed yeah. on my I first mean, maybe, watch. Maybe it was just some fan service just to, to have Baby Yoda just plop down those eggs. I was going to say. Maybe, I, just a little bit of fan service. I feel like they said, listen, we've heard you. You want Baby Yoda. <laughs> so here's just an epi- episode of just that the whole point is just Baby Yoda being Baby Yoda. <laughs> That'd be pretty amazing if – they wrote this episode starting there from Baby Yoda eating eggs, and then they worked around it. So what's the cutest is, thing that Baby Yoda can eat? Which probably Children. didn't happen, but... <laughs> yeah, well, like, Joseph the, obviously... The next line of a like species. <laughs> Joseph obviously isn't going to like this episode because Baby Yoda doesn't look edible. He's actually important. No. Well, He's actually, marinating for me. If anything, it's the, all those eggs. it's the exact opposite of what Joseph wants. Joseph wants to eat Baby Yoda, not see Baby Yoda eat other things. No, you got this all wrong. Those eggs are like boba, you know, little bubbles that explode oh flavor gosh. in your mouth. And he sucked them down. He didn't bite into them. Maybe. So I still got all the flavor from him. I was going to say, and maybe, I mean, he just kept eating. Maybe they're just sitting in there, so whenever you eat them, you'll get all the flavor. Exactly. That's my point. So Maybe some knows? frog frog babies will hatch in your stomach. So let's talk <laughs> scene-by-scene scene breakdown, The Mandalorian, Season 2, Chapter 10, The Passenger. Written by John Favreau and directed by one Peyton Reed, the director of Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, so kind of kind of a rele- relevant name, you know, pretty pretty big. I mean, in the MCU anyway, that's it's a pretty big deal. Yup, yup, yup. All right, so <laughs> we open on Din just cruising along the speeder, very fucking fast, just way too fast for anybody's safety, if you ask me, and. uh 
simultaneously, you see some interesting cats setting up some sort of tripwire. I'm, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. This, <laughs> this man's moving. He ain't, there's no way he's stopping for this shit, right? And they just pull that. They pull it. It, it tightens. He runs right into it. Baby Yoda goes tumbling. I'm fucking terrified. I'm scared for his life. I'm scared for Mando's life, frankly, but you know, he get he gets saved by his own jetpack, which is which is great. Uh pretty much the most intense opening of an episode so far. I'd oh say. my gosh, yes. And my dude, this this shit had me so stressed. Like I was sitting there like, Oh my god. I, like you can't leave me in with that. Like you gotta eat me into it. Like like let me get my sock let me get my socks off first. You know, <laughs> let me, like, let me get my know. fucking bearings, bro. But uh I mean they played that prank that we used to play like as kids, you know, where you pull the invisible rope, but they yeah, actually but they really did, it. did the shit. With the baby and, like, on board. Absolute, absolutely demolished a speeder and took out a car they knew had a baby in it. Like, well, that was what they were after. Yeah, but like, it seemed like they wanted it alive. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Which I'm still confused. Like, why do they still need it alive? Didn't Moff Gideon get what he needed, or maybe maybe that. someone else wants the baby? But I, I mean, we don't fucking know. I don't think they need it alive because they originally didn't didn't need it like completely alive, right? Because they told him uh, like, I, I prefer mean, it alive, but yeah. if it dies, like not the end of the world. That's we fair. can still work with it. That's yeah, that's definitely fair. But uh, in this wreckage, baby and Din are separated, and I I I never fear. I honestly have never feared more for baby's safety. Like I know he's going to be safe, but you know the the fear's still there. No, I don't. I don't know. I didn't know he was going to be safe, so I don't know where you got that feeling from. Well, I know. I just get it from the fact that Baby Yoda is just making Disney millions of dollars. Um, <laughs> well, they're, yeah, they're you not going to watch your television that way. Oh, I mean, in the moment, don't get me wrong. I still feel it. I'm not like senseless to the fact that Baby Yoda is in danger. I am scared for his life, but like in the back of my head, I'm going, "Okay, it's fine. He'll be fine." <laughs> you know the deal. You no, know, I've said it before. I always want in these type of episodes for it to just be like, "All right, boom, kill the kid, show over, uh, done, move on to the next show." And title card. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, these uh, when they're separated, these dudes start firing on uh, Din's Beskar, and uh, I mean that shit's just he got shot in the face, <laughs> and he just ate the shit. You know, it was. I mean, and this this was probably the most shook up since uh, Berg. In episode in chapter six, the prisoner that Mando has been, just because of how off guard he was caught. I, I think it's like whenever you're a baseball catcher and like you hit a you get a baseball right to the dome, but like it doesn't hurt, but like it's kind of you're kind of disembobulated. Yeah, you're you know? you're disoriented it's, for a second, for sure. Yeah, that's a better word. Uh, well, discombobulated kind of. I, I, I kind of fuck with that more. Not even gonna lie. Uh, Thank you. But uh, when this little dude that looks like a metal-faced Jawa, who is the same species as one Tito from The Force Awakens, maybe it is Tito, you never know. Uh, I mean, he would have had to have lived through this fall. I don't think he does. Uh, but, you know, he, pull, he pulls out the big guns, right? And he's, he's, he's ready to fire Den, but pulls that shit with his grappler, takes out the other two bounty hunters. And I was like, fuck yeah. He's got this, this. shit. He's got this shit. And then, this. uh... And then, uh... This dude has the fucking audacity to pick the baby up and hold a knife to his fucking throat. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm pretty much just, like, red with rage. I'm just like, oh, bro, nah, like, you do not hold a knife to my baby's throat, bro. Din, oh. Din tells him. Din tells him. Yo, you put a mark on that fucking kid. There ain't a place in the galaxy I will not find you. And I was like, tell him, Din. Tell him how much you love that fucking baby, all right? Yeah. That was just like one of my favorite moments ever in this show. I was just like, oh, he loves that kid so much. And uh, <laughs> uh, he says, uh, there's a lot of shit in the wreckage, you know? Get what you want. And he, he eyes the Boba Fett helmet for a second. I was like, accept that. Don't touch that. And... uh He's like, ba -ba. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And that means jetpack, apparently. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Din takes it off. Best negotiation in ever, the world. Ever. Oh. Din, Din sets the 
then sets the jet pack down perfectly. As soon as he did this, I knew, like, I was like, oh, I was he's like, he something. set it up right for sure. I was like, he's fucked. Like, he's fucked. Like, he has a plan. I said, he ain't letting that shit go. Hell no. Nah, he sets the shit perfectly upright. <laughs> this little Tito looking motherfucker walks up, sets Baby Yoda down right next to it. You hear Baby Yoda cooing, just scared for his fucking life. And then little guy picks up the jet pack, starts running away, and then baby does his little fucking run towards and Din, and yes, it's just the bro. cutest shit of all time. Oh, this was really cute. Oh, it was, man. it was the, I think this is, this is definitely the cutest of the episodes. Okay. Yeah, right. for sure. Mm-hmm. Like the little hug, I mean, I don't, it, like oh, the little grasp on his bro, leg, like, oh. Bro, it's just adorable. And uh, as this little Tito motherfucker looks, uh, is running off, Din launches him into the sky. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, what goes up must come down. He falls yeah. to the ground, and uh, Baby looks at it. He watched the whole thing, and he looks up at Din with a snort. He goes, <laughs> "He's like, <laughs> like, I he's like, you. he's I like, did the shit? They really thought they could fuck with my dad, like." And no. Din, and he Din looks back down at him after the snort, and he gives him a shrug, like, "Yeah, I love you." Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just love it. And uh, the the jetpack just returns right to his feet. Falls over, and we get the title card. Bang! And in this moment, I'm sitting in my bed. It's two. It's two o five a.m. And I, I just fucking yell. That's how you open a fucking episode, okay? <laughs> that was that shit right there. Like the best episode opening I think we've ever gotten. Not even gonna front. Not even gonna front. Uh, they didn't have to add that at all, and they just decided to show like how protected how protected Mando is gonna be. Over and and they're still just showing the continuous danger they're in, you know? Mm-hmm. They're always on the run because they're always being chased. And uh later in this episode, the reason Din was moving so goddamn fast on that speeder, he even says he's like the only thing keeping me safe is the ability to move fast. And he was moving. He was fucking moving. But next we get a uh, probably the slowest Din has ever moved with uh the marches through the sand of Tatooine. He's headed for Moss Eisley with his uh, entire travel pack on his back. Just, he's really roughing it here, man. That's a strong, that's a strong motherfucker there. To like keep that pace, oh, yeah. not get tired. He he arrives at Moss Eisley straight up, just not not killed over or anything. His back doesn't hurt. He's chilling. I don't know. Maybe this Beskar armor is like a exoskeleton or something. Else. Maybe, oh. but I mean, like he he holds that shit on his shoulder. I know my back's hurting when I pull up when I pull up to the cantina, bro. No doubt. I don't even know if I make it to the cantina. Uh, but he uh, he makes his way in, where we see a slew of great characters, including a character that we saw in Rogue One, or at least the same species as one, the big furry motherfucker. As soon as he walked in, he was uh, he was a rebel in Rogue One. So I thought that was I thought that was cool. So maybe maybe the same character, maybe not. I don't know. But uh, he goes over to Pelly, sitting with a uh, with a ant pal. And I was like, this is just Peyton Reed written all over it. He was giving an homage to Ant-Man here. It was Anthony. It was Anthony. It was Anthony. And, uh, but, uh, his name's actually Dr. Mandible. So there's I never. I hated that. I hated that. You hated that? I hate Dr. Mandible. It's Bro, really what's he the doctor like of? What do you think he's the doctor of? Fucking nothing. He couldn't you, even win his bet. You, you, so you think he's just like calling himself Doctor Mandible? Nah, bro. This man has he, he's got a doctorate somewhere. Maybe it's no, just I don't, I don't know. I think I think Peyton Reed thought of rejected names for the original Ant Man and said, "Fuck it, let's ride." <laughs> there's already there's one too many doctors in the Marvel universe. Got to Doctor Hank Pym was actually originally yeah. Doctor Mandible. Oh, that'd be amazing. But also, that'd be I mean, that'd, be, that'd be a great little Easter egg. Who's gonna call you if you if they if you start calling yourself Doctor Mandible? Q noise. It's a very memorable name. I mean, no <laughs> doubt. But uh, Pelly says that uh, Doctor Mandible here has got a contact for Mandalorians, so that if he's willing to match his bet here, then uh, he'll connect him with the contact. He's on a hot streak, you know. He's got you, no doubt. But then, alas, she wins the hand with an idiot's array, and Din's not happy. He's like, "Yo, what the fuck." <laughs> you just said he's on a hot streak and you lie <laughs> through your teeth. And uh <laughs> But Pally gives him the information anyway, like a she's she's a pretty good chick. She's just about the hustle, you know. And uh she says the contact will meet him back at the hangar and uh 
they're they're headed back to the hangar and she's like you better have some of that meat for me and it ain't got to have any maggots i hate maggots <laughs> i mean and who would want maggots in their meat frankly uh baby yoda probably Mommy? probably i mean y- baby yoda's eating <laughs> fucking anything we as proven so we cut back to the uh, hangar bay where we see that brick of crate dragon meat just getting absolutely fucking roasted by this treadwell droid uh, and it's also a Treadwell droid named Treadwell. Pelly comes out and yells, it's like naming your dog, dog, bro. Like, that's, that's wild. Uh, but Baby just watches on in awe. He's like, fuck, I want to eat that whole thing. <laughs> I just know it. That's the whole episode is him looking at things and going, I want to eat that, you know? That's how I feel. Okay, think about how absurd a, tur- a Disneyland turkey leg is and how that would look in Baby Yoda's hands. And now imagine a crate Dragon, like, Aww. hunk of meat. That's like five of <laughs> him. Maybe more. Oh, I mean, that's like a month worth of food for Baby. Don't get me wrong. But like, nah, man, that man is a hoover. He can house some <laughs> goddamn food. I don't know how he was smashing those eggs, bro. I mean, we'll get to that. But uh, <laughs> Pelly's like, hey. Make sure it's medium rare. I'm not some Rodian. So apparently, Greedo was just smashing some well done meats, bro. Just, <laughs> just char that shit and feed it to Greedo. I, I wonder if Han could have negotiated his way out with just a really well done <laughs> steak <laughs> instead of killing the guy. I, got, I gotta wonder at this point. Damn. So apparent. I mean, it's just it's just interesting to me that Rodians are known. For eating their meat well done. Like, what the fuck is that? I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's so fucking random. It's, wow. I just that was love insane. It. Uh, but, uh, Pelly tells Din that there is a Mandalorian covert in the system. And that, uh, she's not sure if they're the ones from Navarro. But, uh, the contact will lead them to them. Which is pretty cool of them. On this, uh, planet called Trask. In the, uh. Uh, the system of the gas giant coal Iber, I think is what it was called. I didn't take that down in my notes, but I think it was something like that. And uh, learn learning some new planets. I looked it up on like the Wikipedia because it sounded familiar. Trask. I was like, have mm-hmm. we seen this before? No. the The fucking page was like literally the excerpt from the Mandalorian. <laughs> it was like in chapter <laughs> in season two, chapter ten. Pelly says to Mando that they're going to... <laughs> they update that so fast. That's oh, insane. They're, they're quick to it. They're quick to it. Uh, Din inquires what the catch will be. And uh, Pelly is insistent that there isn't one. She'll just need a finder's fee. Uh, the contact wants passage to the system. Oh, and uh, you can't use hyperspeed. And he was like, wait a fucking minute. And she described this as one small skank in the scud pie. Do you think they have the same definition for skank? <laughs> no. Surely not. Come on. But, okay, this is kind of a weird plot point, too. Like, these eggs can only survive if you don't go really fast. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I think it tracks. Like, I think that probably makes scientists... Got involved in a plane crash. What? But it Listen, can't go fast? Don't question it. The people are going that fast, and it doesn't affect them at all. Like they yeah. walk around their shit. Well, you don't know that it doesn't affect them at all. It might be like a type of thing. Like the first time you do it, it like fucks. It maybe fucks it's like you a little bit. maybe it's also like a roller coaster. Like before they get on, they're like, "Yo, you can't be pregnant." Yeah, interesting. <laughs> That's fair. This is a fair point. I'd, I'd I'd be I'd just assume you know, but um, also maybe it's not even like they know something's going to go wrong. But maybe she's like, you know what? These are the last of my like my bloodline. I'm going to play it safe. Let's yeah. just let's take it nice and slow. I think that's like, probably that's probably fair. It this probably, woman can't lay any more eggs or poop them out, whatever the species does. Poop so them out. This is like, she noticed like, oh, can't lay any more eggs. And this is it. <laughs> but, uh, but Din is very, very not a, not a fan of the not going in hyperspeed. He's like, yo, moving quick is the only thing keeping me safe right now. And Pelly's like, dude, circumstances are mitigating. And he goes, fuck you mean mitigating. <laughs> right around right around the corner comes Frog Lady. We see we see Frog Lady for the first time, and uh, she's carrying her basket of eggs and immediately catches the eyes of one baby Yoda. And it's just a magical moment for a second. Uh, but uh, here, Din tells Pelly that he's not a taxi service. But uh, Pelly says that she can vouch on her life. 
which is bold, considering she just met her. Uh, Pelly speaks to the frog lady in her language, which I thought was cool. I was like, that's pretty random. We don't see humans speaking a lot of anything besides English or Huttese, you yeah, know? Yeah, this shit, fucking, when I first saw it, I was like... <laughs> What it was the pretty, hell? It, was kind of, it, it reminded was, me of like Men in Black, like some Men in Black shit. Yo, that's pretty accurate, actually. You gotta cue the noise. Uh, Pelly speaks in the frog lady's tongue, and it's quite disturbing. Uh, she turns back to Den and is like, yo, this is her spawn. They can't go on hyperspeed, or else they die. They need to be in the other system by the equinox, equinox or her line will end. Uh, but, uh, Din needs a currents. He's like, yo, are there actually Mandalorians here? I like how you're reading this almost like Luis would read in Ant-Man. Oh, kind of. Yeah, that's pretty you accurate. Think a, is it a Peyton Reed thing? Maybe it is a Peyton, Peyton Reed thing. I haven't read I haven't read notes quite like this, you know? I'm making this kind of animated. But uh, <laughs> Din needs that assurance, asks if there's actually Mandalorians where they're headed, and uh, she's like, yo. I assure you, my husband has seen them. And, like, that's, that's like, the most assurance he can possibly get in the situation. He's like, oh, fucking fine. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we then cut to Baby, again, looking at the eggs. And the uh, music plays for the very first time that he's, uh, when he's looking at the eggs. And it's just fucking awesome. I love it. Every time that the, he saw the eggs, the same, like, synthy, like, just kind of mystical, curious music played, and I just thought it was adorable. It made me think of, like, a video game. Like, I could hear a video game, like, cutscene almost, or something. That's pretty, that's that's a good comparison. Like in Lego, like in Lego, like a Lego Star or something. Oh, dude, that, yeah, that'd be, like, one of the little cutscenes that they show. Mm -hmm. I definitely, definitely the first time I saw the eggs, I was like, there's no way these are making it out of the mission. Did not think that the reason they wouldn't make it out was because of the fact that Baby Yoda ate them all. But, you know, it works. <laughs> it does work. And uh... <laughs> So next, we're back in the Razor Crest, and Din's explaining that traveling at sublight speeds, not very safe these days. You got pirates, you got warlords, you got etc. And we'll see the etc. in a few moments. Uh, he tries to speak hut tease to this woman, this frog lady. She does not understand it at all. She can only speak the tongue of frog. But she also understands English. She just can't speak it back, you know. Uh, or maybe she understands Hatiz. I don't know. She just can't speak it back. Uh, the language barrier proving already. Yeah, maybe her right. voice box just can't produce those say sounds. anything else other than her language. Like the Wookiees. Like they can't do I never thought about that. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, but uh, the uh, next word... We're down in the hole with a baby. He's peeking around the corner, looking at those eggs, curious as could possibly be. And uh, he just waddles on over, puts his face up to the tank. It's all cute and shit. We get that little shot through the tank where his face is all big and blue. It's really cute. This beautiful music plays. It's just awesome. Just so cute. I bought the pop figure today of him with the little tank because I had to. They already and, uh, made that? Yep, they were like, we're ready because they're doing they, that. Man they they're, doing that, they're doing that Mando Mondays thing, man. Where they knew, shit man. Out. They knew this was going to be a thing. Yeah, they knew this shit was going to be cute as hell. Uh, and he he turns to see if anyone's watching him, make sure he can get away with this shit. And then <laughs> he really quickly approaches the glass, puts his hand up, and is like, "Come here!" And he brings the eggs towards his little hand. And this, the music swells, and you're like, oh my god, what the fuck's gonna happen with these eggs? I thought he was gonna, like, burst them with the force on accident, just because he didn't know the strength of his power. Yeah, do you see when he put his hand, like, on the glass, and they started moving towards him? Mm -hmm. Like, I thought he was, I thought he was gonna kill all of them, so then, like, I don't know, I thought the girl, like, the frog lady would try to kill Baby Yoda, and I'm like, okay, this is two attempts on Baby Yoda's life already, I don't, I don't <laughs> want another one in this episode. Well, what's funny, too, is that, like, People try to do the, uh, like, is baby Yoda got a hint of the dark side in him because we saw him do the force choke on Cara Dune and stuff. And, and like, there was, like, a little bit of suspenseful, like, what's he going to do to these fucking eggs sort of thing in this moment. So, but I really just think it's his child. It's just him being a child, you know, like, yeah. he yeah he, does, he doesn't know how to control his emotions. So when 
and he doesn't know what arm wrestling is. So he, <laughs> so, so he force choked that woman. And then, uh, and then here he's just trying to eat, bro. <laughs> yeah. I, I think him. this is interesting because maybe it's showing us like, if you're force sensitive and you know it, like you're not good nor bad right at the beginning. Like there's nothing that makes you good. You know, it's just what, how you grow up. It's and just like, how you, yeah. How you learn. Hmm. And, uh, I, I'm really, I'm really like, I just don't, there's no way baby is a dark sider. That, that no. doesn't happen. That just doesn't happen. That ruined the brand. Would be uh, hilarious. Like in this case, like he's just a kid. He's just hungry. He yeah, just saw, just, he just saw just colorful hungry, looking man. things that look tasty and he wants to see what they taste like. It was a beautiful, they were good. That was a beautiful prop. Yeah. That, that it looked, it looked like just eggs in Spotchka, that Spotchka yeah. drink they've been showing us the whole time. I mean, shit, I would have eaten them. <laughs> they did look yummy. They did look yummy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, then up in the, uh, in the cockpit shuts down some of his systems, tells frog lady to get some rest as that's his plan. He's going to go get some sleep. And he, uh, he heads down to the hole, checks the little bed and baby's not there. He turns quickly to see baby slurping on an egg. And he, he, he runs to baby's like, no, 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 no. That's not food. Don't do that again. And then he just holds him there for a second. He looks him in the eye and he goes, nap time. <laughs> And then Day make, uh, Dan makes his way to his little bed. He puts, puts baby in the little hammock and then he crawls underneath him into his bed. And I did not know Aww. this was his bed. It's so cute. They have like their, it's like bunk beds, but his is just a little like shirt or something. It's just oh, really it's so cute. cute. It's like a little hammock above his bed. Exactly. You know, what I kind of thought whenever Baby Yoda was just kind of smacking on these eggs, I was like, you would think the woman, you know, this is her last line. Of you know everything about her, she would have kind of stuck with the eggs a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like but I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad she didn't. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad provided, that we it got provided us some good comedy. You know, oh, yeah. and it also provided. Yeah, it also provided Joseph with the opportunity for more flavor in Baby Yoda whenever he inevitably eats him. Those oh, first wow. blasting eggs would be so good. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I mean, you saw how Baby Yoda was addicted to them. You know they're good. <laughs> You ain't lying. Uh, but, uh, next, Din wakes up, sounds of sirens blaring in the crest, and, uh, he heads up to the cockpit and hears transmissions from New Republic X-Wings. And I was like, fuck, it's the cops. And, uh, he, <laughs> he explains that he's pre-Empire surplus, so he doesn't have to run a beacon, but they inform that that is not the case because this is New Republic territory, so run your fucking beacon, bro. And, uh, it looks like he might get out of this. He's like, uh, I don't have that software online, and and he's uh, like, "Oh, sorry, I didn't know about it. I'll uh, get you I'll next sure time." To, yeah, I'll make sure. I'll make sure to get that going. And they're like, "Yeah, you do that." And he's like, "May the force be with you." And they go, "And also with you." So, this tells me that the force is just something they say. Yeah, yeah. it's just kind of like a. It's like it's know, like when people oh. sneeze and we go bless you. We're not actually blessing anybody. Well, I, am. I really didn't like it sounding coming like the sound of it coming out of Mando's mouth. Like it yeah, just it sounded weird. Made a force I weird. just didn't. I didn't like it. Well, that that part of it too is that like he was generally uncomfortable this whole time. Oh yeah, he was very nervous. This is like easily the most nervous we've ever seen Din. I think, and I think that's part of why he said, "May the force be with you," because that's absolutely <laughs> not something he would say. You know? Yeah, I don't know. What What do you think? I don't know. Like there was no. I don't think there was any threat. Really? Like, what were they just going to, like, get him for all of his charges and stuff like that? Uh, I think they, I think what he was most concerned about was the prison break. Ah, that the makes prison sense. break from a new, a new Republic correctional facility. Okay, that makes sense. They, they even asked, they later. even asked him, yeah, they even asked him about it here in a couple seconds. And if, uh, on rewatch, I realized it was what they were talking about here in a couple seconds, but, uh, mm-hmm. the new Republic, uh, is like, you know what? Actually, send us a fucking ping. We're sweeping for Imperial holdouts. We want to make sure you're not one of them. And he's like, well, if I see any, I'll let you know. And they're like, yeah, sh- sh- sure, buddy. Still uh-huh. send us that okay, fucking ping. Okay, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> sure, buddy. Still send us that fucking ping. And he's like, uh, I don't, I don't have that, I don't have that hardware online. And, uh, uh, but, uh, and he was just so nervous. No, bro. dude, what I wrote in my notes, I was literally like, he's the, he's so fucking unconvincing. Like, dude, this <laughs> dude could not sell a fucking goddamn unicorn if he had one, bro. Like, well, what's, he's fucking terrible. It's just wild because I think he's like, I think he's getting more and more uneasy because he has more and more at stake, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, he's like, 
like he's really nervous in this situation because like if he gets brought in by the new republic what's that mean for this fucking baby now you know foster I think, care i think that's something i think that's <laughs> i think that's sort of something that's kind of always going through his head is like if something happens to me then what happens to him you know and i think that's kind of why he's always he's a little bit more on edge than he usually is mm-hmm. and uh <laughs> After they uh, push him for a little bit about the uh, ping, he's like, fucking fine, here it is. And he activates the ping, and uh, the, fre- the frequency just wakes Frog Lady, and it sends her into a fucking panic, bro. Her and- scream had me so freaking weak. I was bro. dying like, laughing. This was, I was so confused. I'm like, what happened? Like, it, it- yeah, it was the frequency from the freaking... The, that makes the sense. more sense now. I was wondering the same thing. I was like, the fuck? Dang, I never... How do you? you know? Like, what? Calm down. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it... I don't know. I, I kind of. So have the, has she never been in space flight ever and never heard a beacon that's supposedly on every ship? I guess, I guess not. Maybe, maybe she, I might also be like, you only hear it in the cockpit. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Uh, this causes Din to like, just further panic. Just be like, uh, it's a uh, fucking something doing something in, in the back. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and one of the X-Wings like, uh, partner, switch to channel two. It's totally Dave Filoni's voice. And then he, uh, <laughs> This is so just, funny. And they so go silent for a second, and then just you you hear and you watch the X wings arm themselves. Just, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, uh, "Were you at the New Republic Correction Transport Bothan Five, which is what they're asking about <laughs> mm-hmm. the prison break?" And uh, Mando's like, "Hmm, was I on the <laughs> this, dips?" He's like, yeah, "Homie, I, homie runs." He's he, he said, "Fuck twelve. Yeah, this is hilarious. Like, like, let's just switch to a different channel so he can't hear us at all, and then <laughs> arm our ship <laughs> so he obviously knows what is probably about to go on. This chase oh, sequence had me so like it was so good, but like at the same time, all I could think about was literally Gru's ship from Despicable Me just flying around. <laughs> the fucking noise. <laughs> but uh, the uh, the X wings go chasing him into the atmosphere of the nearest planet, where his uh, only shot is outmaneuvering them. He deactivates his ship throttle and uh, completely just free falls. I was like, "This is a bold strategy, Cotton." Let's oh, see how I love out. this. This this gave me like such. I just love any air sequences and just like shit like that. And movies always gets me. Like I love it's it. Beautiful. Like this remind it, it put off the vibes from a for- from the Force Awakens when Ray. Let's the Millennium Falcon free fall so Finn can fire mm-hmm. that shit right at the ties. I was like, Ugh. did the pull back up like the? Shoop. Oh, that was Bro, that was. I'm sick. not gonna lie, that was some of the nicest piloting we've ever seen. In that the was Star a nut, movie. honestly. That was hard as fuck. I remember the first time I went and saw that movie, and that shit happened, and I was like, yo, they're fucking legit. <laughs> I was like, I'm all in on Ray and Finn, bro. I like these two. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh. You know, he's he's free falling and shit, and they follow him right down in that canyon. It was like that free fall did absolutely nothing for him besides just get him lower to the ground faster. But I still feel like he could have flown that. And, and, I don't know. Just interesting strategy. And uh, the X-Wings follow him down into that uh, canyon, and Din takes a risk in slipping through the thinnest possible opening in the ice. Tell me this scene sequence in the canyon didn't give you serious, like, throwback vibes to, like, any sequence... In any of the original trilogy of like X Wing and the like, you know, weapons, the mm-hmm. you know, grit, you know, I don't know, whatever you Oh, yeah, the, the little, the little the system. Yeah, the, yeah. Tell me it didn't give you those vibes like that. Oh, that was like, beautiful. And if you played Squadrons, that, that's the, that's what they have in front of you as you fly through the cockpit. Like it was like they, they stuck pretty true to, to what they did, like with that video game. And they're, they're pretty consistent about what they're doing there. And I, I kind of dig that. I want I just want to learn more about the New Republic, frankly. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to know about this show is eventually going to get into their fall, right? Or like depends on how the long rise, the rise of the First Order, at least. I was gonna say, it depends on how long the show goes on for. Probably. Probably, yeah. But uh, you know, he uh just slides on this ice, ultimately crashing, and uh, we hear over the comms that the X wings. Did lose the Razor Crest here, so I guess it ended up paying off temporarily. And uh, after sitting in the crest for a couple seconds, the ice creaks and they they drop a little bit, and they're like, ah, fuck. And then they just free fall. 
several feet into an ice cavern, and uh, now the crest is in the worst shape we have ever seen it in. Did were you guys thinking the same thing I was thinking whenever like they dropped on this planet? Like, were you thinking of a particular planet in mind? Like maybe Ilum, possibly. Ilum. Yeah, like I, I wanted I, it to be Ilum, but uh, I'm I'm cool with I'm cool with what they did with it in the end. Yeah. I mean, Actually, what I was thinking really... was, what's oh, up? Sorry, uh, Colton. I know you you might recognize it just because you've watched Rebels. It lo- it really reminded me of the scene with uh, can't remember either of their names. Callus and Zeb. Yeah, Callus and Zeb. As soon as they fell on, I was like, oh, this is the Callus and Zeb planet. It's, it's the exact, <laughs> it's the exact, the exact same, same premise. <laughs> yeah, they fall they fall in they fall into this ice cavern. They can't make it out. They don't know if they're going to survive. It's a rebel, and I mean, like this is. Not in Mandalorian, but in yeah. Rebels, it's a rebel and an Imperial, and that's ultimately what makes Callus realize that like the Rebels might not be all that bad. And uh, I was like, "Yo, are we just gonna get basically the same episode here? <laughs> are we just, but, uh, just stealing plot lines from Rebels now?" Or <laughs> well, I mean, like Dave Filoni did did contribute quite a bit to Rebels, and he also contributed heavily to the Mandalorian. So. Uh-huh. It would make, make, make quite a bit of sense that he's, he's also did the same thing with Clone Wars with the, uh, like episode four last season. Uh, the one where they go to the, the, I think it's called Sanctuary, where they go to that little remote, uh, village and protect it by training the villagers and stuff. They did that in Clone mm-hmm. Wars multiple times. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So yeah, they're, they're not afraid to do shit they've done before, but just change it up a little bit to make it something new. And, uh, but after this, crash Din wakes up and is, he's already like a little like his best guard is already a little chilled mm-hmm. you know it, it, it's an awesome look i Trust loved you. yeah i loved like if this would be a like a video game alternative like armor oh, you could wear yeah. i would i would rock this one i I'd, be, i'd dig it yeah that'd be pretty fucking pimp i would like that a lot uh but he looks to frog lady who is just absolutely freezing on the ground and he uh he just he picks her up and he's like, "Yo, I'll find your eggs and I'm gonna get you some blankets. You look cold as fuck." And uh, he heads to the hole and sees the massive gash in its side. And he uh, he immediately checks the bed to see if baby's there. He's not, so we go searching the hole and he removes the sheet <laughs> and he finds baby just slurping down some more eggs. <laughs> this and, uh, dude, it was like they were going for a jump scare, and it's just little baby Yoda getting caught with his hand in the cookie jar, like it just. <laughs> Oh fuck! <laughs> it's like, damn it! I thought you were sleeping. <laughs> and Din takes the tank away while scolding, uh, scolding baby a little bit, and uh, <laughs> baby slurps down one last egg. And <laughs> Din looks at him and goes, "How many did you eat?" <laughs> <laughs> and baby responds responds with a fucking burp. I loved it. <laughs> Mando is just like Mando is just sewing over his head with this. This is such a hard stage with like, kids. Man, I'm like, really a dad now. Honor is fuck, and it's like, are you prepared? Oh, hell no. He's the, he's the he's the parents. No, no, no. Ah, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> No, no, no! Ah, uh, just continuous, <laughs> continuously like fuck! Don't, don't eat! Ah, oh, fuck! No, don't, egg. don't do it! Ah, uh, fuck! And that's just always him with baby. And uh, we next see them all just trying to gain some warmth in the hole. And uh, baby, uh, baby, and Mando are looking to rest, but uh, Frog Lady's in an absolute panic about her egg. We can't understand her. Neither can Din. This creates quite a problem. He tells her to get some rest. That's all they can really do at this point, you know. So. Just chill the fuck out, lay down, and when he when he cozies up, baby just walks up on him and snuggles up next to him. And I was like, God, God damn, dude, it, man, they, just, they had a they really a lot over, of cute moments. They just overkilled the the. I mean, um, I'm not pissed about it. I'm not yeah, pissed about it. Once again, as I said, they said you want Baby Yoda. All right, we're gonna give you an episode yeah. full of just <laughs> Baby Yoda cuteness. Oh my god, it was adorable. And he just cuddled up next to him. He was like, I'm cold. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> Frog Lady then uh, makes some intense eye contact with uh, Zero. And uh, suspenseful music plays. And you're like, oh, man, what's oh, she going to do with Zero? Yeah, I was like, is she really going to like – I thought she was going to take some of this technology, make like a weapon out of it, and like threaten the both of them. But, yeah, I did not expect to, that she would do Wake what she did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, just mad intuitive. Like she's just getting her bag right now. Like she's oh, she's, a, she's, she's a scrap. She's a scrappy young lady, you know. 
She she's about her business. She knows what she's doing. But then next we cut to the voice of Zero saying, "Wake up, Mandalorian!" And uh, Din draws his weapon. He's like, "Yo, what the fuck? I killed your ass!" And uh, you know, he quickly sees that Frog Lady is controlling the voice. He goes, "What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that thing's a killer!" And she's like, "Yo." I only took its vo- vocabulator. You chill the fuck out. And, uh, she explains that, uh, the eggs need to get what, need to get where they're headed. You know, she, she's like, we need to be active with our actions. My husband has worked very hard to find the only planet that's hospitable for our species. I don't know how I've been off that planet, but I have. And, uh, Din tells her that the deal is off, dude. We are lucky if we make it out of here alive at all. So sorry, your line's going to end today. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, kiss like, your God, kids goodbye. Damn. If we even survive long enough, I'm just gonna feed them to the baby. <laughs> <laughs> she then just guilts the shit out of him. She's like, "I thought, uh, I thought keeping your word was part of the Mandalorian code, huh, buddy? What's up? What's up?" She goes, "Perhaps those were just stories for some children." And <laughs> oh, that's Dude, really got Mando, him, man. He's a father now. Like he ain't gonna no, do her dirty after no, that. Because no. baby looks at him, mm-hmm. and he looks at baby, and he he just knows he's like, like oh, damn I it, really, I really gotta do this shit. I re- I really do, or else I I don't know how I'll live with myself. And uh, so he heads out to repair the ship, and we get this just gorgeous shot of the wrecked Razor Crest in the snow with the light coming through. And I just I loved it. It was another. It was pretty much another shot straight out of Rebels. Um, but, uh, as he does his repairs, baby watches on just babbling his fucking ass off. He's like, blah, 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 blah. And Mando goes, how about you come over here and do something? Make yourself useful. And I was like, what is that little dude going to do? You just told a toddler to get a job. Yeah. Like, what is he going to do? Just be there for moral support? Like, I know, I know he was joking. Like, obviously he knows. I don't know. This could be like an off screen thing where like, where like Mando's like, Hand me that uh tool, and the baby Otis is like da 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 da. Here you go, Dad. I don't know. Kind of, I know, mean, that'd be. Cute. Cute. I'd really. It's like gonna that. be a Mandalorian short. It's you know how they used to have like the Disney shorts. It's just gonna be <laughs> Baby Yoda just handing him the wrong tool over and over again. Oh. Maybe this maybe this was a setup for something like that later down the line. Disney, there you go. You're maybe. welcome if you haven't got that idea. Go ahead and sign me to the contract. I've already <laughs> come up check. with. <laughs> cut the check. Uh, but uh, <laughs> baby just gives in and walks away and he's like i know you'll follow little bitch boy. <laughs> little bitch you, you little bitch boy follow me and <laughs> then's like yo but but but, but, but no <laughs> he's just like baby come back baby come back and uh baby you will all and, and need approaches sorry. baby and he's <laughs> he approaches baby and we get this little shot that we saw in the trailer of baby just standing in the snow and uh he uh Baby's still babbling his ass off, and he picks him up, and he's like, "Well, how long has she been gone?" And uh, I mean, obviously, baby's not going to answer that. This scene uh, where I'm sorry, I gotta backtrack for a second. The scene where ba- uh, Mando yells at Baby Yoda, mm-hmm. this just gives me such like Eleven and Hopper vibes. Like, hey kid, <laughs> when he said that, especially, it's just 100%. like wow, like Through the noise. Yeah, I mean, and like this is one of the most classic. And like a, a trope I will eat up every time you put it in front of me. The gruff, just uh, straight up guy, just like I do what I have to. I'm a hard motherfucker. Fuck with me. Like with Mando and Baby Yoda, with Hopper and Eleven, with like Logan and Laura Kinney, if you've ever seen the movie Logan. Like yeah. it's just it, it's it's a great trope and it it's always it's always gonna be good to me. Like I'll always eat that shit up. Absolutely. Uh, one hundred percent. Cue the noise. Uh, <laughs> baby, uh, he he picks up baby and he's like, "All right, let's follow these footprints." Because I, because even in even in snow, I have thermal lighting. Uh, well, maybe and, uh, perhaps this is where the easiest it is to see a thermal difference. Potentially, I was gonna say also if if it's in the snow, wouldn't there just be you know normal footprints? <laughs> like you're walking in snow, you're gonna create fo- footprints. <laughs> You, right. you raise a really valid point. Maybe it's just easier for him. He's just too lazy to really look for these, really look for these uh, footsteps. He's like, I'll just take, I'll just take. Right, listen, the I have to go predator mode, mode for this one. Noise. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he follows the steps deep into the caverns, and he sees the warm glow in his thermal sight just around the corner where the uh, footsteps lead, and he goes to find Frog Lady sitting in a hot spring with her eggs. 
Mm-hmm. And he was like, there you are. This was sick. On back. This, oh, was this, like, this was a vibe. He was in love- a hot tub in like the, the cave that they're in. Oh, man. Freaking awesome! It would be it'd be very very cool if if not for the uh, spider yeah. infestation. <laughs> uh, and uh, while he goes to pick him up or pick the uh, eggs up and telling her, you know, I can't keep you safe out here. We got to get back to the ship. And uh, baby again approaches the eggs and he goes, no, <laughs> no, don't you don't you fucking touch those eggs. And uh, and he let he lets out a legitimate whine. I know. He's he goes, get sassy. Oh, Yo, I was told I'm, no. I'm thinking we are going to see a Baby Yoda tantrum this season <laughs> where he really fucks shit up. He just oh, starts 100%. crying and he's like, I'm talking force pulling <laughs> shit off the wall. Oh, oh dude. What if he yeah, like cranks his armor or something? Like, I feel insane. like that's also going to happen after he like just like really fucks something up. Like, he's going to cause, like, even bigger issues than he caused in this episode by, like, summoning a fucking demon spider on them. <laughs> he's going to really fuck things up, and Amanda's just going to be like, all right, listen. <laughs> all right, listen, buddy. You, you, you got to start speaking English, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> after he lets out this this little whine, he, he wanders off, just keeps babbling. He's like, you know what, fuck it. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, Baby's just one hungry motherfucker because he wanders right to some more eggs. <laughs> Dude, this man and the eggs. Man, Bro, and he, he must be going through his growth spurt or something. Maybe this no, is what it's hinting at. Because, <gasps> like, listen, bro, for how disgusting he's about the thing he's about to eat is, this little shit of him peeling open the egg really quick with his little, with his little claw. Mm-hmm. He was like, and it just like peeled open. And he was like, <laughs> I don't know. He took a good sniff. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, that smells good. I feel like he really went, all right, I can't have the bright, colorful orange eggs. Fine, I'm going to go eat the little shit eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and he, just, he eats the creature that's inside in the in the goo. He just keeps scooping it out like he's a jawar. I didn't like this. I, I kind of did. Di- I, 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 I digged it, man. It looked kind of good. I, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was – I thought it was. Uh, I mean, it just shows that Baby Yoda has no – no sense of what he should and should not eat. He no standard. Like, no, I don't think he just has a standard. Out. Dude's just hungry. The, this right here really makes the fact that he's eating a woman's children uh, a lot better. Because it becomes obvious he's like – he's just eating anything that looks edible. <laughs> yes, that's that's very valid. I'm surprised he didn't put the little knob from the uh, – Honestly. From, yeah, from the little uh, control thing on the on the razor crest in his mouth, and just eat that shit. It's the force. He can sense that these things are alive, and he 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 hungers for the blood of the innocent. Oh my god! <laughs> he, oh my god. He, he is bloodthirsty, but uh, <laughs> kill streak. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> tactical nuke. Keep the noise. As he uh, as he does this little eating thing, where he's scooping the goo out of these little eggs, uh, the other eggs start. Shaking and they start hatching and these little freaky spider things emerge. Bro, and... Fuck those things! Fuck the hatching scene. It reminded Bro. me of the scene from Alien with the I was... alien in the stomach. And Dude, then nice. the fucking goddamn score was so good, though. The score it was like oh. so like chilling, but like good at the same time. It so was so fucking good, good bro. Oh, fuck. the noise. And... <laughs> yeah, just do the noise. Uh, baby, uh, baby lets out a series of just panicked cues and like even a scream. Yes. Ben immediately is like, "Yo, what the fuck?" He turns around and baby's running to him as quick as we've ever seen him run. <laughs> and, uh, Den Den picks him up, and Fro- Frog Lady's still sitting in the spring, and they watch as all these spider emerge from the eggs. And Den quickly closes the tank, puts that shit on his back, and uh, initially quite small. These spiders just kind <laughs> of like a, "Oh shit, we're gonna have to run a little bit." Problem. Uh, Frog Lady uses her tongue to grab her clothes. Very quickly gets dressed like. I don't know how she did it, but she did it, and uh, and then uh, it 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 gets bad. Here comes Mama. Yeah, dude, big Mama. It's Aragog. It's fucking Aragog. Uh, and that's a big bitch. Get the noise. Uh, yeah, from Harry Potter. What's What's interesting though is that like while I have seen stuff online saying like this is a ripoff of Harry Potter, I uh, I have to direct you to the art of the Empire Strikes Back. Harry Potter. Is a copy of Star Wars in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. Also, every single, yeah, they're all copies of everything. 
Yeah, so, 100%. Yeah. yeah, I mean... Actually, it's all a copy of The Lord of the Rings since it had a spider in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in this art of The Empire Strikes Back, Ralph McQuarrie had a concept art for these spider things, which were originally designed for Dagobah uh, to be with Yoda. And uh, there's actually some really interesting backstory behind it. And I learned it from a podcast I listened to earlier today in which in this book called uh, the illustrated star Wars universe, he actually goes into the backstory of these spiders and the, uh, those big ones who grow to be that big are actually wooden on the inside. Like they are made up of wood and when they got to a certain size and strength, they would plant themselves in the ground and become the trees you see on Dagobah. What? Yeah. That's like the, that, that was like Ralph McQuarrie's original idea for what these creatures would be. Obviously not the case anymore, seeing as they're <laughs> not Dagobah, but that was the original idea for this creature, which I thought was just fascinating. What the heck, man? How do you even come up with that at all? That's mad creative. Mad creative. Uh, but obviously, after Mama comes out, this is when they bolt. Mando's like, you fucking move! And uh, this chase is a lot of fun. It features Din just picking off some spiders with a blaster. The Mama spider stomping through the top of the ice ice caverns nearly stabbing them frog lady actually leaping like a fucking frog it was awesome well, it made me laugh so bad oh it was, it was so funny and then maybe and, Yoda a little scooting off just scooting on <laughs> fucking just oh i couldn't do that that sequence i just couldn't stop laughing i was literally just gigging and uh and din also throws some pretty badass detonators oh. and it looks like looks like he kills mama spider for for a moment you know nah. And then we get, we get this shot of him arming his fucking flamethrower and he looks at it and I was like, oh fuck yeah, this is the literally what I've been waiting for you to do this <laughs> the whole time. How have you Since not the happened? spiders crawled out, this is what I've wanted. <laughs> it really was. I was like, why is he not just flaming these fuckers? And then this is where it happens and we see the glow from the other room, which I really dug. Uh, it reminded me a lot of uh, in chapter two when we saw the blaster fire from Baby Yoda's perspective. Back to a reference Kyler made in that episode. Uh, but yeah, it was just very, very satisfying chase sequence. And, uh, the webs these spiders shoot are actually pretty fucking cool too. Like this is like some Spider-Man ass shit. They're like just firing them shits. And, uh, the mama spiders. Go web, go. (laughs) Go web, go. Fly. (laughs) Cute noise. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, one, one web actually traps Din's hand on his own ship and then another spider jumps at him and he just catches it and smashes that it. That was with so hand. bad fucking ass. And I was I like, Din idea. is no fucking joke. Bro. And the, he didn't fucking miss either. This man was blasting tiny spiders, just, pew, 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 just hey, blasting man. them the fuck away. It was uh, it was mighty impressive. Dude, all he needed to do was just get a little keynote or tote and just run a fucking train, and he'll be fine. Just fucking... God, it's like he's never even played zombies. Oh, fucking noob. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one uh, uh, and he he gets back on the ship and uh, he's making his way to the cockpit as these spiders are just flooding in the hole, and uh, baby and la- uh, frog lady are waiting up there for him and. Too many spiders are making it through. They're all over a terrified baby Yoda on his head. His arms are too small to get it. It's really, it's, it's, it's scary, but it's cute. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, then we see blaster fire just tear through these spiders. I was like, yeah, there you go, Mando. Protect your child. And then we cut to frog lady. Yeah, that's what I said. Fucking dying piece with a blaster. I said, bitch, don't shoot a baby Yoda. When did she fucking learn to shoot like that? The fuck? <laughs> Bro, I was like, Man, she is like, she's on it with that blast. She's Dude. she's just like uh, Omara back in episode four. You know, she's really she's gonna protect her kin, bro. It's like that meme when it's like you're playing two K against your girl, and all of a sudden she threw an alley oop, and you're like, "Who taught you that?" <laughs> <laughs> Cue the noise. Uh, Mando closes the door on the remaining spiders using his uh his flamethrower. You know, and. uh Din sets up to launch. He's like, yo, strap in. It's going to be bumpy. Uh, these spiders just surround the ship. 
and uh, the ship lifts from the ground. I'm like, fuck yes, we're out of here. We go, psych. Here's mama. And I was like, yo, where the fuck did this guy come from? He just and this motherfucker's holding a grudge. He's like, nah, nah, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Dude, no. When I first saw the Razor Crest, like actually get off the ground, all I could think about was the EDP video where he's like, "How did he not die?" That's all <laughs> I could think of was just that, like, because how the fuck did that thing even get off the damn ground? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how this thing is operating in the slightest. He must have gotten more done in those repairs than we actually got to see. Uh, but uh, you know, Mama Spider, she stomps through the cockpit twice. Just, psh, psh, and I was like, fuck no, that's a big spider. And then she looks down inside with her creepy ass eyes. And then she puts her horrifying mouth on the glass and it just opens up and there's more teeth. And she drags her teeth across the glass, which is literally my least favorite sound on earth. So I was just horrified at this point. And then we hear and we see some blaster fire as it tears through the spider. And I was like, finally. Here's Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I didn't even think about that. That would have been awesome. I was like, he followed on the slave. He followed on the slave too. You know, he he cruised behind them, and he he was like, I'm a save. I'm a save them because they have my armor. But then I was like, all right, fine. It's not him. Fair enough. Uh, but Din's confused as fuck. He exits the crest and he makes his way through the fucking webbed up hole, which is just disgusting. That's going to be a really intense cleanup job. And uh, he goes around the ship, and on the other side, he finds the two New Republic Dude, soldiers firing were, on the. They were just having fucking target practice out there, like that. Oh, they were nice, no, it, bro. And what I said in my, I literally said, I said, good blaster shooting looks so freaking insane and like ridiculous after what we get with fucking stormtroopers. Like, yo, it's like, how are you this good? Yeah, it makes it like seem like such an unthinkable task. Like, there's only bounty hunters could shoot that well. Like, yeah, they were fucking on it. But these, like, these are, like, some real deal trained soldiers. Fuck 12. They, fuck 12. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, he's like, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they're like, yo, we know what you did. You took that prisoner from the New Republic transport. Quinn. But also... We know you apprehended three fugitives that were on the most wanted list. And he's like, also, you made efforts to save our boy, Lieutenant Davin, played by one Anakin Skywalker. Good guy. <laughs> and uh, he's like, so am I under arrest? And they're like, technically you should be. But these are trying times. <laughs> no, not, I mean, I'm like, oh my God, like... <laughs> I was like, so he's just gonna, he's just, he's, he's, they're just gonna, they're just gonna let him go. Like, th this is like the end of the interaction. They're like, we'll save you from the spiders, but we're gonna dip. And, uh, Din's like, yo, so I'll forego that bounty on those three, uh, most wanted fugitives if you just wanna, you know, seal up my hole so I can get the fuck out of here. And they're like, ha! We're cops! What did you think this was? We're gonna leave you here. Good luck. And we won't blow you out of the sky the next time we see you. Just fix that fucking transponder. Dude, Mando. One thing I forgot to mention, when Mando's standing in the spotlights in his in the armor, just standing there, he looks so fucking like noble, majestic. And that armor when yeah. it's all frosty, mmm boy, that shit was nice. I was just say, you know, best case for them, they leave him here, they get all the benefit, and he dies. So like one less one less criminal. <laughs> Potentially, potentially. I mean, he, he could have been like, yo, baby on board, but. Oh, I, yeah, I'm saying from like their point of view. Like, there is oh, no yeah, downside yeah. to li just leaving him. You should get that yellow, like, diamond sticker. Like, baby on board. <laughs> baby on baby board. board. Stick it on the back of the Razor Crest. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the, the X Wings take off to like an interesting hip hop twist on a, uh, resistance nope. song from I the. I just Super had that in my notes. That shit was so dope. It was really hard. It was like the sound. It was like the same song as when the Poe Dameron's leading that shit on uh, Maz's uh, or Maz Maz was her name Maz, Maz Kanata. Maz Katana. No, Maz, 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 Maz Kanata. Maz Kanata. They're going to Maz's castle and uh, they're flying in. That was the same. And Han Solo's like, "It's the Resistance." I was like, <laughs> "Fuck yeah, wow!" And Poe's like, "Yeah, get him out." Of but like, yeah, that song that's playing during that, they put a little hip hop twist on this, and they were like. 
fly out this bitch because they're, they're the new republic now. And I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but, uh, you know, next he boards the ship to tell Frog Lady it's going to be a long ride ahead. I'm going to fix the cop, uh, cockpit enough to uh, limp to Trask. And uh, that's also the only place they'll be able to be on the ship, the cockpit, because uh, you can't pressurize anything else. So you have no choice in the matter. Get in the cockpit. Uh, he's like, if you need to use the privy, use it now. And I love that he called his bathroom the privy. <laughs> that's just like British as fuck, randomly. <laughs> Very, yeah, interesting, nonetheless. Maybe it's an Old West thing, too, but I, 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 I only know that through, like, Victorian. Mm-hmm. England. It's yeah. like, oh, it's privy. Mm. But, uh, you know, he, he continues repairing the cockpit as baby watches on just like mesmerized, which I thought was cute. He was just like wanting to watch his dad at work. Aww. And, uh, uh, they get themselves out of the cavern. They make it into space in this brutally beaten razor crest. Like they are seriously <sighs> limping here. Like it's, it's fucking wobbling through the sky. Like you're, that's, that can't be safe. No bueno. And, uh, no, not, no, no way. And, uh, Din's like, yo, I'm gonna get some sleep. Wake me up if anybody shoots at us or if the door gets sucked off its rails. And she responds and he's like, uh, ah, just kidding. If that happens, we all die. <laughs> Good night. Dang. Man, so he's he great with the social cues. Just really. Bro, he is, he has just like the, the driest comedy of all time. And it's great every single time. Dude, I love it. I love it because he, like, he, they really portray him as someone who does not know what the right joke is. <laughs> also, in my head, I feel like every single time he tells one of these jokes, he's laughing his ass off in his head. Oh yeah, like, he thinks he's fucking God. hilarious. He's just like, God, I'm so fucking funny, but I can't act like I am because like, that's not the way. Going into the dad joke room. Why is it that every time I tell a joke, these assholes don't laugh? Like this is comedy <laughs> gold. <laughs> Yeah, he wishes Frog Lady sweet dreams, and Baby <laughs> turns around, eyeing the eggs in her lap, and uh, she covers them up, and he turns back, and you think he's like, you know what, I'm a little remorseful, I feel a little bad about eating her eggs, and then Psych just pops another one right in his Dude, fucking mouth. the stinky <laughs> egg was a must-have for the end. I loved it, I loved it, and then, How'd you know, he get it? Flies off. But it was and I don't care, bro, he just got it, he got it. <laughs> uh... This is going to end, like, I've already watched this episode three times now, because I, I watched it the first time, and then last night I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna watch this shit, because I really, really was like, I need to give this another shot. I know it's, I, it has all the elements of just really fun Star Wars, you know? It's got a massive creature, same as the Crate Dragon, Rancor, all the big, all the big creatures we've seen throughout this series, and, uh, I just, I, I really enjoy it. It's gonna, it's gonna be one that I revisit quite a bit, I think. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I'm excited for next week, dude. Oh, yeah. It's gotta I, be I, something good now. Well, I'm thinking that because we kind of have been narratively not pushing the story forward, really, these first couple episodes, that we're really gonna hit the gas. That's what I think, too. I was just thinking that. I just I'm think thinking they're going to freaking like, hammer it home in, like, really hardcore. Think, maybe next episode, maybe ne- maybe the episode after, but I think that... what? Like, is there eight episodes in this season, like, norm- like last year? I'm assuming, I'm assuming there's just eight. eight, then, dude, I mean, we're already a quarter of the way through, and we have not progressed the plot at all. I think it's going to be like a like Game of Thrones season seven sort of thing, where... Like, we were all hyped. It kind of started out kind of slow. And then episode three, it just, boom, here's here's the biggest battle, like, we've ever done. So I, th- yeah. I think it's kind of like like that. Like, the hype Season is eight. real. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Eight. No problem. No I don't problem. talk Keep about it much because who would want to, but. Bro, but that Long Night episode oh. is just, I, I, I remember the week that came out. I rewatched it every fucking night. <laughs> I loved it, bro. Keep I was on. just like. Cue the noise. Uh, it's just, it's so visually pleasing. Just oh, yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous work. But, uh, this is not a Game of Thrones podcast. This is not. Uh, <laughs> uh, where, when do, when does Grief Karga, Cara Dune, Moff Gideon, like, where, do we think we start progressing this next episode or is this an even, are we, are we going to keep with these one offs mm. the way we did, uh, because I mean, you I think about it in season one, 
four, five, six could be con- could definitely be considered one offs, no doubt. Okay. So this is true. Like I, I, I'm anticipating one off episodes in this season, but I think that's what they're going to get out of the way early, and then just press the gas. S- See, I think I think they uh, they teased all of those characters. It's actually just for season four. Season two and three are all just one off, one off adventures. Every shot of their, oh my every God, shot of Cara Dune and uh, Grief Karga is in the finale. That's yeah. all they show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Actually, this, this is the finale of season four. I think that, like, I don't, I don't think this is going to be a big narrative push. It might be a small start, but I think there's going to be a bomb dropped at the end. Like, I think this is going to be that planet like, where we saw that mysterious woman in the trailer. And everyone I think so guessing too. how or who who it is, and I think it's it's going to be that episode next. Well, I think if they get to this planet Trask, where uh, supposedly there's a Mandalorian covert, that would also track with that woman being Sabine Wren. Mm. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. So because she is a Mandalorian, you know, so uh, maybe she's kind of making her way around also looking for some more Mandalorians because of maybe she's doing the same thing. Dennis just trying to find anybody who survived this, uh, the great Persian stuff. Hmm. She would have insight on the dark side. Uh, this is going to be such a oh. fucking good stretch. This is just going to be so good. good. Mm. She'd be like, who has the dark saber? Or maybe she knows who has the dark saber. Who knows? And we learned, uh, we learned today that in, uh, Two episodes down the line in chapter, I think that'll be 12, Carl Weathers will be directing an episode. And when I shared this tweet with you guys, being Kyler and Joseph, you both immediately thought this meant Grief Karga dies. And that yeah. did not even occur to me. Yeah. Dude, so I'm, I'm just will saying, you guys explain that? every, like for me, it's just like, I feel like every time I've thought of or heard of an actor getting involved in like the actual creative process for an episode. Like they end up, ki- they're like their initial idea is just like, let's kill my. How do I fucking die? Like, why yeah. don't we just? Or fucking die? it's like, like let, let me go out with a bang. Out. Let me or, let me direct the episode that I'm gonna go out on. Oh, yeah, that I, mean, be, I like that train of thought. It could be like, yeah. hey, grief. We think you're gonna like, we're gonna kill you. So like, <laughs> you want to take this? You want to take the lead? You know, we, I, we'll work it in. Like I said to you guys earlier, I think that if grief Karga is to die in chapter 12. He would have to be introduced in next episode and it would have to be the beginning of a good arc. Okay. Yeah. You know? yeah. Because like he, he really hasn't done enough to earn like a, like honorable really death. great on-screen death. Like, I mean like he deserves an on-screen death at this point, but not like a dramatic, like well, we're doing this for you grief, think, you know? I think we've seen the complex like arc of him, like being, Initially, like, really appreciative of Mando, and then coming after him when he fucks up with the bounty, and then he ends up making it right at the end, and now... Because oh, hmm. in the making of The Mandalorian, they mentioned, like, he was going to be killed off early, but they mm-hmm. liked him so much they kept him in. And I wonder if, to progress with the story that they originally wrote out, that he has to die. Like, this is a thing that sets off a well, lot of things in emotion. Yeah, and I think that... I think that they kind of feel like they're probably playing with house money now. Like, we were going to kill him season one. Like, fuck it. Like, Je- look at what happened to Jesse Pinkman. Like, he was supposed to die, like, basically, I think, in the episode he made his appearance in. And they fucking made a goddamn movie about him. <laughs> yeah, set after the finale. Yeah. yeah, like, this man <laughs> made it. Or maybe they, you know, really liked him. They're like, all right, we're going to keep him. And then they just decided, they're like, actually, you know what? We don't really fucking, we, we fucking hate this dude now. Let's just get rid of him. I'm tired of working with him. <laughs> I don't know. I, I got... So let's let him direct an episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's let him direct an episode, kill him off, and then never see him again. <laughs> no, nah, there's no way that's the case with Carl no, Weathers. obviously not. Everybody loves Carl Weathers. Oh, yeah. I wonder if we ever get a Werner Herzog directed episode. Oh, God. Mm, no, I have too much talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, too much talk. <laughs> I don't like it. No, no. Uh, but uh, I, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the season. This was uh, a fun episode. Definitely mm-hmm. gonna, definitely gonna be one that I revisit quite a bit. Uh, I look forward to next week and speaking with you guys again. Oh yeah, same here. I was joined by Joseph George. Thanks, buddy. Anytime. I was joined by Miles Buttress. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you, Kyler Barnett.
Oh, wow, I'm caught off guard, but uh, no problem. You forgot to do the thing when he said any time. You would go, yes, next, next week, week, in fact. Actually, I was I, <laughs> I, I, I set you up, man. I, I wanted to hear it, and it's okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I've got, it, thank you, Joseph George, for joining me this week. Oh, any time. Uh, you know, next week even. Oh. Uh, this has been the Penny Bloom Podcast. I look forward to next week's Mandalorian rewatch. We'll be doing... Chapter 11. I'm excited to see what it's called. Excited to see who directs it. I don't know anything about it. I'm Sabine looking forward run, Sabine, run. Sabine, run. <laughs> looking forward to it. This has been the Penny Bloom Podcast. Peace, love, and bloom.